In the second part of the Tubo Machinery chapter, we will cover five more slides and finish the classification details. Similar to the first video, I try to put extra images and videos in this one too, to make it exciting and instructive. Let's begin. If you remember, in the first part we've gone through a classification of tuba machines based on the working fluid being an incompressible liquid or a compressible gas. We will do another classification now. This time we again have the top branch as power absorbing and power producing. But then the classification is based on the path of the fluid inside the machine and the way fluid interacts with the rotating parts. We will learn about radial, axial and mixed machines. We will also learn impulse and reaction type interactions. The first machine is the propeller. It is listed as an uncased machine because unlike a pump or a compressor we studied in the first part, there is no casing around it. A propeller is an axial flow device because fluid enters and leaves it parallel to the rotating shaft and perpendicular to the rotating blades. Main flow direction is along the shaft axis. The aircraft you see here is an Airbus A400M. It's a military transport aircraft with four turboprop engines. As you see in this image, the two propellers on each wing rotate in opposite directions. Turkey is one of the eight original partner nations of the Airbus A400M program and manufactures certain parts of it. Here is a detailed view of one of its four propellers. It has eight blades having more than 5 meter diameter and the propeller produces 11,000 shaft horsepower. MSC Oscar is one of the largest container ships in the world. Its length is almost 400 meters. It is driven by a single, five-bladed propeller, one of the largest propellers in the world. This propeller weighs more than 100 tons, with each blade being more than 10 meters long. This propeller derives a diesel engine, giving the ship a speed of 42 kilometers per hour. For many turbo machines working with liquids, such as marine propellers, Cavitation is an undesired phenomenon that needs to be avoided or minimized as much as possible. Cavitation is the local boiling of the liquid in locations where the pressure drops below the vapor pressure of the liquid. It makes noise and vibration and damages the blades of the machine, as seen here, reducing the operation lifetime. Here you see the USS Pennsylvania submarine of the United States Navy. For submarines, Avoiding cavitation is especially critical due to noise generation concerns. Let's watch a video about this. When a submarine's propeller turns quickly, an area of low pressure is created on the blades. This lowering of pressure causes the water to boil without heating up and produces bubbles of steam. This is called cavitation. The formation of those bubbles is dependent on how fast we rotate our propeller. So the faster we go, the more risk we are for cavitation. The Pennsylvania's propeller design is a closely guarded secret. But the basic principles of a quiet running propeller are known. Cavitation only occurs when a propeller spins quickly. Slowing the propeller down reduces cavitation and therefore noise. But slowing the propeller also reduces a submarine's thrust. To overcome this problem, the Pennsylvania's engineers developed a unique propeller with four additional specially shaped blades. These generate large amounts of thrust, but at much lower speeds. This way, the Pennsylvania produces almost no cavitation or propeller noise. Power absorbing machines with a casing around them can be axial, radial or mixed type, based on the flow path. Here you see an axial flow fan, and here is what an axial flow pump looks like. 
It looks very similar to a propeller actually. Fluid enters and leaves the device parallel to the shaft. In radial flow machines such as the radial pump shown here, blades give the fluid a radial velocity component. Flow direction at the outlet is perpendicular to the shaft. Radial machines are also called centrifugal machines. The flow pad inside mixed flow machines is somewhere between those of axial and radial ones. There is no sample image for this type of machine in the slides, but here is what the blades of a mixed flow pump looks like. As you see, the exiting flow has velocity components both parallel and perpendicular to the shaft. Different applications require different types of machines. Important operation parameters of a tuba machine are the head, the flow rate, and the power delivered or absorbed. The axial flow pump you see here is the world's largest pump in terms of flow rate. It is used in the Netherlands for flood protection purposes. It can pump water at an amazing rate of 60,000 liters per second. But the head it provides is only a few meters. Its power consumption is 4 megawatts, which is a very large value for a pump. In general, axial pumps are used when the desired flow rate is high, but the head requirement is low. Remember that the head of a pump is directly related to the pressure rise it creates. We will study the details later. KSP is one of the world's leading pump manufacturers. These are a couple of the centrifugal pumps they produce. As you see, the head delivered by these pumps are larger than 50 meters, much higher than the record-breaking axial pump of the previous slide. However, these centrifugal flow pumps deliver much smaller flow rates. The last one, for example, delivers 10.8 cubic meters per hour, which corresponds to only 3 liters per second. In general, centrifugal pumps are used in applications with high head and low flow rate requirements. Power producing machines can be of impulse or reaction type. This classification is based on how the fluid transfers its energy to the machine. Energy transfer can be based on pressure exchange or momentum exchange. In most cases, some combination of the two is used. Machines operating through a net change in momentum are called impulse type. Machines that use pressure as the primary mechanism are called reaction type. Pelton wheel is the classical example of impulse type machines. Although here wind turbine is also listed as an impulse type machine, in many references it's not classified as such, so it's better to remove it. In a Pelton wheel, High-speed fluid jets hit the buckets, transferring momentum and causing rotation. Energy exchange is established by changing the direction of the jet. Pressure does not vary considerably as the fluid interacts with the buckets. Reaction type power producing machines can be of axial, radial or mixed type. Captain turbine shown here is an axial machine. As seen, flow direction is mainly axial at both the inlet and the outlet. Captain turbine is kind of a reverse running axial pump. It is used when the available head is low and the flow rate is high. Low head means that the elevation of the free surface of the water reservoir from the turbine's inlet is low. Typically they produce less than 200 megawatts of power. Hydraulic turbines are very effective devices, with efficiencies exceeding 95%. Bonneville Dam is an old dam on the Columbia River. It is a run-of-the-river type power plant. It has almost no water reservoir, but produces electricity mostly by the natural flow of the river. Run-of-the-water dams provide only a small head, but high flow rate. Therefore, Kaplan type turbines are suitable for them. This is one of the retired Kaplan turbine runners of the Bonneville Dam. The dam houses several of these to produce electricity. Notice the simplicity of the design. As the water passes over these blades, it exerts pressure on them, causing rotation. The shape of the blades, and especially the angles at the inlet, 
and outlet are important design parameters. Let's watch an animation of how a captain turbine works. Radial type hydraulic turbines are called bankai or cross flow turbines. They are not as common as axial or mixed types. Here you see an animation of how they work. They typically generate less than 10 megawatts of power. The final item here is the mixed type hydraulic turbine, also called the Francis turbine. It is the most powerful and the most commonly used hydraulic turbine type. A Francis turbine can generate more than 800 megawatts of power. Here you see the runner of a Francis turbine. Grand Coulee Dam is another old dam on the Columbia River. It is one of the largest dams in the United States with a total capacity of 7 gigawatts. It houses 27 Francis turbines. Its large reservoir provides a head of 100 meters to these turbines. In general, Francis turbines are used when the available head is high and the flow rate is low. Here we see one of the runners of the Francis turbines being lowered into its final position. This is what a typical Francis turbine runner looks like. It has several curved blades. This image shows the spiral casing that provides water to the turbine. Water taken from the dam's reservoir follows this path and goes through the blades of the runner to rotate it. Let's watch a short animation of how Francis turbines work.
This is the end of the second part of the turbo machinery chapter. In the next part, we will begin studying theoretical calculations.